What's up, team? We are here with the talented, very yeah, successful Mr. Lars. Good looking. Yeah, oh, that's true. Yeah. Good looking. Humble. Yeah, humble at the same time. <laughs> Head and Borg. You know, it's not a regular occurrence that I sit down with someone that, like, actually punched me in the stomach. You didn't physically punch me in the stomach, but you did it with a question or really a statement. On a coaching call, you wanted me to bring you a personal win and professional win. And I had a very hard time bringing you professional wins. Professional wins were fine. And I shared with you a professional win that I'd gone to my son's soccer game. And I shared with you that he was surprised, like, ah. And you were like, that's terrible. In all seriousness. And it really knocked the wind out of me and caused me to really stop and pause and think, you know, what I was doing and how I was spending my time. I also know that you can't give somebody something that you don't already possess. And I know part of your story is having gone down a similar track mm -hmm. and whether it was someone like you who said that to you or you kind of noticed yourself that caused you to start to make some changes is that right yeah i mean for yeah for me it was probably more more or less just not having you know the the, the comfort of a family sort of environment as a kid mm -hmm. and just knowing that i i didn't want that for my family and, you and then you get into real estate you're like oh shit it's like <laughs> instantly it blows up in every part of your life yeah and uh when you were at the gala and you gave the talk you you showed pictures of you with like your i think it was your son and there's like in your mm -hmm. in your as you're like on a laptop yeah, like right now i'm on my blackberry yeah 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 so so you did that and you notice kind of, cause I'm aware like, you know, in our families, like we're like, you know, we're leaders, right? And I think people are more influential than they realize. Mm -hmm. And we were talking uh, last night about this kind of mental map of different levels of leadership, which really coincide with different levels of consciousness. So you had this awareness, like, hey, I wanna have this like tight family unit. It's really mm -hmm. important to me. At the same time, the world and real estate as a business was pulling you down this path of working 60, 70 hours a week because mm -hmm. that's what traditional success is. And, you know, that first level is like of consciousness is to me. So was there a time where in your business you were thinking that way? Like, oh man, all of this stuff is happening to me? No, I think you and I are similar. I think we skipped the to we me skipped stage. It. Okay. Uh, to, to a certain extent. I mean, yeah. we were talking, you know, um, we do have the ability for whatever reason, we're like massively driven, you know, so I got out of corporate America and got into, you know, this industry and, you know, instantly found the traditional success. And yeah. that, that just leaves you with not a lot of bandwidth, not a lot of sort of margin in your life to show up as the dad or the husband that you really want to show up as. Got it. So, you know, so, so yeah, so we were able to, and we're both like this, we're able to, you know, we have enough sort of personal accountability um, and just driven and, you know, we can hardly help ourselves to a certain extent, you know, the, yeah, the homes are there just to, those commission checks are ours to, to take, <laughs> just to get, yeah. and, and you know, the industry's jacked up in a lot of ways because most agents are, you know, things are just, they're just victims, you know, and the interest rates and the market and low, low, low inventory, you know, and that's just not, it doesn't have to be the story. Yeah. And we both coach agents and have had coaching companies for like a decade. And that is something that I see is very, very prevalent, which is that that particular level of leadership or consciousness, which is to me. Mm -hmm. So this is happening to me. You know, my sellers need to be nicer so I can enjoy myself more <laughs> or enjoy the business more or the market needs to get better or interest rates need to come down. Mm -hmm. And that level is where my success or failure or my personal happiness is dependent on external situations, mm -hmm. props and players. And you were referring to the by me, which is where it's like, well, if it's to be, it's up to me. And you even said that word, which is responsibility, mm -hmm. right? Where it's like, all right, what skills do I need to learn? There's always an opportunity in the marketplace. I just need to go and find it. I'm one relationship away from changing my family tree for the rest of our life. Mm -hmm. Now, did you always have that? Like that by me? Uh, or was there like I mean, a yeah, moment? I, I would, I, the dynamic in my family was for a lot of different reasons. I, I wasn't, there was a lot of chaos and I, I didn't want to bring that chaos um, divorce alcoholism and just a bunch of stuff and i think i just took the role of just doing the right thing in my family so i studied real hard and yeah. you know my my outlet to all of that was the path path of achievement got it you know and just working hard and almost like you can't control it you know it's just like i'm just gonna i'm gonna study for this test until i know i'm gonna get an a i'm gonna you know work hard where i sold 44 homes in my first full year in real estate 
Yeah, and it's interesting because when you say that, I know what you mean. Uh, I think my wife, who's in the room, she would agree with you. She's like, can't even help himself. Like, it's like she's not. In yeah. Uh, well, and I told her one time, I'm like, hey, if something was to happen to me, would you marry somebody that like was like totally not ambitious at all? <laughs> it's like, are you like, I don't know, somebody, you know? And um, so, but I know underneath it, at least for me anyway, I'm curious for you. What I've come to like be aware of is that achievement thing is more like, well, if I achieve more then I'll be loved. Or if I achieve more, mm -hmm. and it's a fear that if I don't, and if I'm not like a rock star at everything, then people won't love me, mm -hmm. is really what that is. Yeah, I mean, probably don't have enough time to unpack all of our yeah. baggage on, yeah, yeah, on, yeah. on this episode. But um, yeah, I, and I feel blessed, I mean, in, in that way to have, at, at least that was my addiction, you know, so to speak, versus yeah. like, you know, doing way more sort of harmful things or uh, things that are not like socially acceptable. Yeah. It's a healthy addiction. Like, uh, yeah. Achieving and making lots of money is like, it's acceptable. Yeah. It's like, good <laughs> job. <laughs> right. Um, but it just, it has this massive like collateral damage that just, w I just wasn't willing to accept yeah. you know, all of that. And being that you weren't willing to accept it, I know the um, suffix eyed, right? What it means is to kill homicide, suicide, mm -hmm. pesticide, genocide. So you decided, you made a decision, this is not acceptable to me. Now, at that time though, was there anyone that you could turn to that could be like, hey, this is how you like build out, this is how you create margin in your life in the real estate business. Was there anybody that you could learn from or was it more like you pulling from corporate America and having that background and like an MBA where you're like, oh, this is how business is like supposed to run? I mean, honestly, I think it was uh, my first coach you know, I went, I went to a conference like my second month in real estate and the first book that that coach had me read was E-Myth. Okay. Revisited. Yeah. So I think that set this trajectory that, you know, I, I was going to build a business, a real business that gave me freedom. Mm -hmm. Even though they're really, I mean, even at the time, teams and, and that whole sort of leverage model, the team leaders had no freedom whatsoever. Mm -hmm. They were still selling like, there are still teams that are doing like 1200 transactions with a team leader selling 200 homes there's still agents doing that now <laughs> yeah and they're, they're marginally profitable at that yeah marginal. You know, so so i i was going to figure out a way to do it as a, a business where i didn't have to show up every day and just deal with the nonsense of all the drama from all of the clients all the time it was just it was just too much yeah and uh so for those who are listening check out the e-myth it's an awesome book we can drop it in the, the show notes here and so that gave you kind of the mental map like the framework mm -hmm. of, hey, like I need somebody to make the pies and somebody to, uh, you know, sweep up at the end of the night and somebody to, you know, be at the register. And then you started to systematically, because you were very systems oriented. Mm -hmm. he, he is the Excel master of the universe. And uh, you started to systematically build out SOPs for each part of the business. Is that right? Yeah. And it's like, um, if you've seen the movie, The Founder with Michael Keaton, yeah. the, the scene where I think it's on a tennis court and, oh, yeah. and and he's on a ladder and he's like, you know, wiping out the chalk lines. And I mean, granted that's, the, you know, they called it the speedy system. Um, but, but their, their vision was to just optimize that one thing so they can, you know, roll it out into 40,000 locations or whatever. And I kind of viewed the real estate business like that. There's so much nonsense that an agent does on a regular basis that, does not make them any money and they think it does. And the traditional model will have you think that you need to do all the 12 jobs that a real estate agent is required to do. Mm -hmm. And 10 of the 12 jobs you can hire people to do for way less than $50 an hour. Yeah. And as you were doing this, I think you, you know, you started to get like, obviously it worked smashingly successful for you. Mm -hmm. Uh, what were you doing at that time, like 400 units or something like that? Yeah, I mean, not, not every year did we do. Um, five years after my first, I did 44 my first full year, and then we did 10 times, over 10 times the production with 10 agents, and I was out of production. And you were completely out. And it was totally profitable. Out. And it was, yeah, I, I took home 1.2 million that year. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. And there were some very kind of prominent voices in the real estate industry that were like, nah, you're full of shit, man. There's well, no way you could do that. Yeah, right? The year before, <laughs> I won't say his name, but he's yeah. been coaching for 40 years and uh, he's got a son that has a big coaching company too. Yeah. Um, I sent out a, a, for a webinar, it, the title of the webinar was how, how I sold 312 homes working one day a week. Yeah. And this guy, who's the OG of coaching, you can figure out who it is, 
um, sent that email, took a screenshot of that email and sent it out to his entire list. And yeah. so people were emailing me like, you know, yeah. and he said, you know, if you believe this, you know, I have land to sell you, like swamp land to sell you in Florida, Florida. or something. Yeah. And I was just like, that is such a, you know, it's like the, um, what's that analogy? They said it today in, in our event where, you know, you have one crab in a bucket and the crab will yeah. get out. Yeah. And you have multiple crabs in the bucket, they're going to pull the crab down. That's what it's, that is. That's exactly what that yeah. is. Yeah. And I, I'm aware it's also a, uh, a lack of open-mindedness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was, I, I got an email like that sent out about me too. So we're, yeah. we're in the same camp. <laughs> it's awesome. And I was talking to th that guy's son, mm -hmm. like face to face with his son. And he said he couldn't get his dad to go golfing with him that weekend mm. because he had a hefty event he had to do. Yeah. It's oh, like it's crazy. If you well, think about it, I think you can only duplicate what you are. Yeah. Right. So, um, and it's interesting to know something's true. Kind of like we know, like EXP is like real. It's like a real thing. Mm -hmm. Rift share is a real thing. Equity yeah. is a real thing. Collaboration is a real yeah. thing. And for other people to be like, nah, that's not real. Right. So you're doing that. And then you figured like, okay, I can teach other people how to do this, right? Was that a natural thing? Was it a natural growth? Or did people start to reach out to you and they were like, hey. No, you still give me shit today about like mm -hmm. not being on social media. Like yes. I'm, I'm super introverted. Like give me a I spreadsheet know. over like anything. <laughs> I was telling Carla, like I haven't been on Facebook in like, I don't know how long. And that's the only platform I'm even on, which is not like. Which is funny to me platform. because you, you said Facebook first. That's kind of funny to me. Right. <laughs> And what I told yeah. you today... I go on Instagram and I get a headache. Yeah. Like everyone's better looking than them. <laughs> and their kids are better behaved and they're traveling all the time. It's like, what am I? I'm a loser over here. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... Um, but I forget your question. But um, you still managed to, like, somehow build a coaching business. Yeah, so I, I think I was it, it was... it was exactly where we started the conversation. You know, where um, th there's a good book. I think it's called The Second Mountain. Mm-hmm where it's like you kind of figure out your first mountain is all the, the homes you sell and you know, the grinding, the and, pushing. All yeah, that, and yeah. And all of that. And then the second mountain is, is helping others to do it. You yeah. know, so leading others and impact. And, and did you really feel like a, like a calling to do that? Or was it more like I remember like a turning mixture? to Julie, my wife and, and saying, do you think I can start a coaching company? And she, you know, when I first married her, I had this like super, cozy multiple six-figure corporate job and then within well we weren't married yet yeah <laughs> like I got, I got into real estate just yeah, after start all over and I'm, I went from like multiple six figures super cozy to I think I netted 37,000 my first 10 months in real estate mm -hmm. I spent money on everything I sold a bunch of homes but I just wasted a bunch, bunch of money and I was like man I've got to figure figure this thing out um, so now it wasn't really natural I mean I, I think I was uh, there's just this higher calling where I saw a lot of, even the, the, the big players in the industry that just weren't, they didn't have a quality of life. They weren't, um, it wasn't balanced and they didn't really figure out the system side and they were still heavy in the business. And a lot of, you know, I watched some of them, you know, just have major, major challenges. And I, I think that was the inspiration. I was also saved in 2009. So I got into real estate in 2007. Um, I was saved in 2009 and that just kind of got me on this journey of just more serving and when I first started my team it was very selfish was it so selfish like not as hard as as harsh as I'm going to make this sound but they were there to serve me yeah you know so it was not the model of leadership that you would read in any book yeah because I was so triggered and I was figuring out how to generate all this business and sell all these homes and um, but it evolved over time and I had some really tough uh, endings of relationships and tough conversations and that really put me in my place and my faith was coming along so with this whole you know model of just not that I'm even in the same you know ballpark as, as Jesus but just leading more like you know that just a, a humble heart and I'm not as humble as I could be mm -hmm. Julie reminds me of it all the time she's like yeah he's working on his humility uh, yeah. I think my wife would say the same thing. Yeah. I don't know if I'm working on it though. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. Yeah. So it just, it, it was a natural evolution in, in conjunction with kind of, you know, faith and also a desire to help other people because mm -hmm. you noticed and you looked around. So it's interesting. So at the beginning you said, yeah, like I didn't want to bring this to like my family. Mm-hmm like what you experienced as a young person. But then what happens is, is like, so once you did that for your family, now you start to look out and be like, well, I don't want like my neighbors to be dealing with this mm -hmm. stuff. And that's like, 
you know, the real estate community. So it's like, yeah. all right, let's, let's expand our level of awareness to them. Mm -hmm. And for the last, I don't know, decade, you've been teaching agents mm -hmm. how to scale and systematize the real estate business so they can reclaim margin and have time and all that other stuff. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Without losing, losing their life in the process. Yeah. And then how did like, how did EXP, because you were, I mean, you were like doing your thing. You're like a successful coach. You've sold all the real estate. Yeah. And then what, what caused you to be like, how is EXP tied into the, like the, the through me thing? I mean, you kind of mentioned it earlier. You, you, you said something like, um, how did you say it? Um, you kind of make these decisions, the IDE. I'd, yeah. Yeah. So, so, you know, killing off pieces, mm -hmm. you know, to kind of go in, in different directions. And EXP was a hard, hard no. Like it was just, I just had this, I actually had a really bad experience with um, friends of Julie came to visit us. And this was when, remember the um, acai yeah. uh, juice, the Mona V? Yeah. That was like the first sort of mainstream M yeah. MLM, as I remember it. And they came and we had this great dinner catching up. Like, these are great people. Yeah. I am not kidding you. It was, and Anders was like young and it was the witching hour. He was acting up and they were still here. And the husband whips out this DVD. And launches into it. And launches into it. And I'm like, are you effing kidding me i got so pissed did you really yeah you're mad and he was inviting me to this thing and giving me the business opportunity i'm like i haven't even i haven't tasted the juice yet mm -hmm. you know so i just had this like weird sort of notion of uh multi-level marketing and um, but once someone you trust you know slows you down to actually look at the model and you know your analogy with youtube is is brilliant but revenue share is not evil no you know, it is like the most beautiful thing there could be. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. It's like someone designing a model where you could benefit in the upside of growing the business. What part of that is like... It's the democratization of like <clears throat> profit. Yeah. Where it just makes it available, where in the past it was only, it was restricted to a very small, one or a very small group of people. And in this model, it's not profit. It's the, the founder of the company right. decided to give 50% of the revenue, revenue. away yeah. to the agents that That's right. built it. That's right. So it's like... You know, so it's a really elegant model. Um, and for the most part, I mean, brokerages are, there's only so much a brokerage is going to do, period. You know, so I, I have a different view on, you know, a lot of the competing cloud-based uh, brokerage models. I think they're fine. I think EXP is great. I think EXP has, you know, all the growing pains out of the way. I think they're totally operationalized. Our leadership's amazing. Um, sustainability, I mean, we have the right financial model. So I think we are on the right platform. But if you just said they were all the same, let's just say they were all the same. It's, it's who you partner with yeah, and like, and, and what you can do to help them grow their business. Oh, and, and I can attest to that tremendously because I've shared it with you more than once, but our probably six or seven months that I spent talking to you twice a month was intricate to me mentally getting over the hurdle of letting something go. Mm. Because in, you know, if in, in that by me stage we were talking about, it's really about control. And you learn, you get the specialized knowledge, right? And you learn kind of certain mental maps. You have some discipline and consistency. And then what happens is, is you can start to kind of, I don't mean to say in an egotistical way, it's just true. It becomes like at will because you can control it. It's easy to set appointments, easy to go take listings, mm -hmm. easy to go just keep doing that. And for that reason, it's very difficult to let it go. And we were on a call and you were like, yeah, man, like, your biggest impact now is, it's, a, it's not about money, it's about impact and time. And your biggest impact is not, no longer sitting in living rooms. It's sitting in a room of four or 5,000 people and teaching them, right? So th that's a testament to it because the, what this model allowed to happen is you were a guy that I was even in your coaching program, never talked to you, mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, there's another coach. And then the moment, well, and you're the one that also helped me to see the model when you explained the difference between profit share and revenue share. I used to be with KW. And you're like, yeah, it exists in that model too. It just goes to one person. I'm like, mm. oh, yeah, yeah, it does. That's true. So um, you helped me see that. Then you, then you also helped me to let go. And you helped me to focus on things that were more important. Mm -hmm. but, all, but the model allowed that to happen. If it wasn't for the model, that would have never happened. Because I wouldn't have spoken to you. Yeah, and also when, not to give away any of the details, but when I asked you guys to put your financials together and I told, <laughs> I told Carla that she forgot to, to fill out the bottom of the spreadsheet, it was yeah. all zeros. Yeah. And I said, 
you know, she's like, yeah, we don't have any liabilities. Yeah. I'm like, well, then for sure you got to give up production. Yeah, I know. Well, then we got on a call. You're like, about? bro, why are we even having this conversation, dude? <laughs> like, this is not, <laughs> not the right conversation. Yeah. But, yeah. but there aren't many folks like, so, so when, when you decided to, to pivot, you know, the, I don't know anyone that would have made that pivot the, the way that you did. Really? And, and no, I mean, it was, so, I, I mean, I'll give the numbers. I mean, I think you were doing like 800,000. Yeah. 850, 900, something like that. Yeah. So... And, and once you sort of wrapped your head around, you know, and, and, and it is this conversation, the three levels of leadership. And for you, I mean, you're going to have the ripple effect of the, the coaching and the rev share and just the combination of the two will have way more impact than you just selling what, like 100 or 200 homes yeah. a year or whatever it is and yeah. doing that for another 10 years. And so the, the, the fact that you were willing to make that decision and just like kill off a... I don't think if I lined up a thousand agents that there, you were the one out of a thousand that would make that decision. That would do that. And it's just like, and you're just delaying, a, a, like that cash flow is going to come back, but it's going to be way more elegant. Yeah. It comes back with time freedom, <clears throat> location freedom. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. And uh, what's cool too is, is, and, and I appreciate your kind words. What's cool too is, is that all of that impact though, like you have a hand in because you helped me to, yeah. to make that transition. Because yeah. without those conversations or with you, <laughs> you'd be like, yeah, man. So when you're like not going to go on listing points anymore, I'm like, I don't know, maybe in like three months. He's like, oh, I was thinking like next week. And I'm like, what? Come on, man. Like, give me a second. And then my wife like, yeah, like you should She's stop like, right now. like, he hasn't done it yet. Yeah, I know. And then you would have to be <laughs> like, like, give him a second. You did. You would have to be on calls. You'd be like, he's making progress. Okay. He's at least talking about it now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm super appreciative and grateful for that. Yeah, it's uh, and and it's just and it's something that I mean it's it's going to continue to grow and and I was, you know, in a down market. So I was looking at my numbers recently in a down market. I mean, every agent let the market dictate how yeah. they showed up. Sure. And and net net, I think my organization grew by like a hundred and. 50 agents or so and it was it was only the growth of your organization that, yeah. that did it you just refused to accept that the market was going to dictate you know what what happened to you last year yeah you know where most agents it's that first level you know this is just happening to me the to market's me. not allowing me to succeed or my sellers aren't you know whatever yeah and i find that the the, the like a little bit is that by me but i think also like a big component of that is through me mm. and i think it also protects and shields you from like getting uh, not humble about it mm -hmm. where it's like, it's like, no man, like you don't understand like this, this comes through me. And I, and I felt when we were having those conversations, it's interesting because your comfort keeps you from your calling. Mm -hmm. And I was just like comfortable. Uh, but through you, perhaps I was receiving a message, which was like, Hey man, like I let go of that. So you can do this other thing. And I think when you're driven by purpose, that's entirely different than being driven by money. Hmm. Uh, I think it's much more powerful. I think, you know, people tell me they burn out. I'm like, you're not a candle. Hmm. You're like a spiritual being. <laughs> like, how could you possibly burn out? Like, you have, the, you have the same force inside of you that causes the earth to spin around the sun at 66,000 miles an hour. How could that possibly ever burn out? And I think it's just because of a lack of purpose hmm. or mission. So I guess for you, over the next, because how old are you? 50. 50. So over the next, I don't know, 10 years, what is your purpose and mission? Man, to launch my kids into the world well, I can probably cry thinking about that. That seems like pretty weighty. I've got a 13 and a 16 year old. Um, and then, you know, just being in the best shape of my life to enjoy the next 20 years after that. It's awesome. You know, so that's, I mean, that's the big purpose. And just continuing, and not everybody in my organization shows up ready to build and grow. Yeah. You know, I offer these tremendous opportunities to plug in and it's, it still blows my mind how few people plug in. I know. You know, so the folks that are willing to show up and want to build and grow, I will do anything. I was telling you, I mean, there, there pretty much isn't a time that you could call me that I won't, unless I'm, you know, totally not able to answer that I won't answer because you're showing up. Yeah. You told and, me you're And like I'll do the same for your team too. I did a call for uh, Jessica, same, same exact. I wouldn't have done that for anyone. Yeah. Really. I would have, you know, people that are paying me $2,500 a month to coach, I wouldn't answer any email or text. Or like, Hey, are you available tomorrow? Like, no, <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> but I don't even hesitate. And there's no part of me that's like unhappy to do that or anything because it's a challenging time. I realize that, you know, agents that are building, they're also in production. And I know that's a massive challenge, 
you know, uh, but this model is just uh, unbelievable. And the fact that we get to do it together and we get to hang out in Cabo and it's amazing. It's just, it's just really, really cool. Yeah. So, yeah. So in terms of uh, my purpose is just mainly just to make sure my marriage is as strong as it possibly could be as the kids, you know, there are lots of great marriages where they just fizzle out when the kids leave and you're like, well, what, what are we married for? So to make sure our marriage is strong, we're physically strong, we're spiritually strong. And then to hopefully our kids will want to hang out with us again. It's the hope, right? <laughs> it's, it's, it's the hope. It's the hope. Yeah. So I just really love it on them and, you know, uh, being active in their lives. And um, it's not that complicated. Staying close to, to God in the process. Starting my days with Julie, you know, uh, praying and reading the Bible. And, um, and there's not much more to it than that. You know, it's not, it doesn't have to be all that complicated. No, it doesn't. And staying off social media. <laughs> probably, I don't know. You probably get me on social I'll media. I'll get you on a little bit, bro. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I love the mission. I love the purpose. It truly is a privilege and a pleasure to be partnered with you, man. Same here. I couldn't, and, uh, I couldn't say it any, any better than that. Yeah. Let's go. Let's grow. Let's do it. Often copied, but never duplicated. Uh, what's up, team? I got with me Mr. John Mikeish. 22, 2300? 2300, yeah.